Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
Thank you. 
Please be seated. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Dalhousie University's Spring Convocation for the Faculty of Health. My name is Frank Harvey. It is a distinct uh, honor and privilege to be serving as Dalhousie's Provost and Vice President Academic, and I will be your MC for today's celebration. And I am sure we are, we are all absolutely thrilled to be here in person to celebrate this. I would now like to ask Elder Catherine Martin, our Director of Indigenous Community Engagement, to deliver the traditional Mi'kmaq welcome. Kwe, midawalok diok, min gadalanang maltaya, weligiskok. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq, the Olnu, and um, it's an honor to be here today to welcome you in this traditional way, especially our honored guests, the graduates. Um, your heart's beating. That's why I played the drum for you to help you, you know, bring the heartbeat down. I assure you, as soon as it's over, the heartbeat goes back to where it is. You all, you know all about that. Um, so I'd like to also welcome the families to to Mi'kma'ki, and um, I'd also ask that uh, in peace and friendship, our treaties that have been with us for hundreds of years is um, a time that we celebrate, that we still are able to uh, welcome you in peace and friendship. Um, before I hand it over to the ones that know what to do here, <laughs> Frank, um, I'd like to ask if we would take a moment of silence and remember all of the families 
um, today whose children um, were taken from them, especially those in, um, in Texas. And, you know, just to all together maybe send them some really good thoughts right now. Thank you very much, uh, Catherine, for that beautiful welcome. I uh, would also like to begin by acknowledging that Dalhousie University and our community benefit from and sit on Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We are very grateful for our partnerships and our friendships across Dalhousie's campuses, our faculties, and our administrative units. We are grateful for our community leaders, our elders and residents, our Indigenous Advisory Council, our Director of Indigenous Community Engagement, our Indigenous Student Center, Indigenous Research Facil Facilitator in our VP Research Office, Indigenous Health Programs, inclusive pathways to the medical and health professions, and many, many other important initiatives and partnerships across our campuses, faculties, including the Faculty of Health and other administrative units. We will continue to work on and build on these critically important relationships and friendships uh, because we are all treaty people and we take these words and our commitment to truth and reconciliation very seriously. We would also like to acknowledge the histories the contributions and the legacies of the African Nova Scotian people and communities who have been here for over 400 years. We are grateful for our African Nova Scotian uh, Advisory Council and our Director of African Nova Scotian Community Engagement. There are two times on our university campuses that are particularly significant for us. The first, of course, is at the start of each year when we bring students uh, to campus and into their programs. And the second, of course, is at the end of their programs and we come together as we are here today to celebrate uh, the completion of their degree. For many, uh, this day comes with a range of different emotions, uh, sadness at leaving Dalhousie, your Dal community, and many of your friends. Perhaps eagerness to move on from Dal and Nova Scotia, uh, possibly a little fear and anxiety about the future, and certainly gratitude, I am sure, for all those who supported you along the way. But among the different emotions you and your classmates are working through right now, I hope you feel pride. You've accomplished what many can only dream of, and you should be proud of your many significant and noteworthy achievements. Completing your degree, particularly in the unique and challenging circumstances of a global pandemic, certainly gives all of us many reasons to be incredibly proud of you and your achievements. Convocation marks the culmination of years of very, very hard work. You spend hundreds of hours in classes and tutorials. You've come to campus during lockdowns to complete critical skill-based labs and simulations. You've read thousands of, thousands of pages from books, journal articles, and research reports. You've written and studied hundreds of pages of notes that you've extracted uh, from those books and reports. You've completed many formative and summative exams. You've completed clinical and practical fieldwork hours within various health settings, many of you supporting frontline COVID-related care delivery. You volunteer to support pandemic-related activities with many supporting COVID testing and uh, vaccination site operations here on campus. And of course, you've made many friends. But you've also spent a good part of the last several years balancing school and work and social lives, dealing with fears and anxieties about your program and your future taking chances and risks on your programs and your courses, dealing with relationships and social pressures, maybe just a little bit of pressure from your family and friends. Uh, you've been managing your budget and in many cases completing your degrees while juggling a job and in some cases more than one to cover tuition. And I am sure you've dealt with personal and emotional crisis and losses and perhaps losses tied to the pandemic. Your graduation today speaks volumes about your capacity and willingness to succeed anywhere by applying the life lessons 
the skills, the knowledge, the passions, and the life choices you've been collecting and living through uh, over the last four to five years. Again, convocation marks the end of years of very, very hard work. Don't let anyone tell you after graduation that it's time to, quote, get in the game. You've been in the game for several years, including through the two-year pandemic. That's why we're here today celebrating. That is why your family and friends and the entire Dalhousie community are so incredibly proud of you. So feel free to make some noise. Congratulations. <laughs> Family and friends, although we would typically encourage you to move around the auditorium and take as many pictures as you'd like uh, for health and safety reasons, we, we would ask that you please stay in your seat, take as many pictures uh, as you'd like. We have a photographer from Life Touch who will be taking close-up photos that we will be sharing. Uh, and please do share your best uh, celebration photos and pictures uh, online using hashtag uh, Dalgrad. And as always, the convocation is being uh, webcast so you can have the pleasure of watching it online uh, through the Dow website. Now I'd like to take just a moment to introduce those individuals who will be participating in the ceremony today beginning with Scott Bryson, our Chancellor, if I can ask you to stand if you are able. <laughs> Dr. Deep Saini, President and Vice Chancellor. <laughs> Dr. Louise Spiteri, Interim Chair of Senate. Dr. Brenda Merritt, the Dean of the Faculty of Health. Dr. Marty Leonard, the Dean of Graduate Studies. Donna Bourne Tyson, our Dean of Libraries. Dr. Yuri Gantar, our Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Elder Catherine Martin, our Director of Community and, uh, uh, Indigenous Community Engagement, who gave the welcome today. <laughs> Elder Anne Labillowa from Eel River Bar, New Brunswick, who will be helping today. <laughs> and Aaron Prosper, a Dal grad in neuroscience and the former president of the Dalhousie Student Union. Dr. Adria Quigley, our 2001, the recipient of the 2021 Contract and Limited Term Faculty Award for Excellence in Teaching, who carried the Dalhousie New Dawn staff leading the students in. And Dr. George uh, Mencher, the honorary degree recipient for today. Also, also uh, uh, on the platform party today and in the audience are many other faculty, staff, and administrators, including your associate deans and your VPs and many others who have been so critical to the success of our students and to the academic excellence of our program. So if I can ask all of you to stand as well. Can I ask you all to give them a hand? Thank you. Please be seated. I'd now like to invite Dr. Deep Saini to deliver the President's remarks. Thank you, Dr. Harvey, graduates, family and friends, and distinguished guests. A very warm welcome to you all to a very warm Rebecca, Rebecca Cohen today. We, um, we've been trying to get the air conditioning back, but uh, apparently the bills still haven't been paid, so we're trying to get that. <laughs> Apologies for the, the heat in the hall. What uh, an amazing honor and an immense pleasure to finally have this opportunity to join all of you in person for this convocation. It's been a long wait. After two years that kept us physically apart, it's very welcome return to this important rite of passage. Today's ceremony blends long-standing traditions with appropriate adjustments such as masks and so on 
for the times that we are living through and a nod to the place where Dalhousie is anchored, this beautiful part of Mi'kma'ki that we call Nova Scotia and our home. This ceremony is a celebration of your transition from students to graduates and alumni. But even more importantly, and I'd say most importantly actually, it is a celebration of your achievements and your accomplishment as a graduate. This milestone is a very well-earned personal recognition of the efforts and abilities that you have and a source of great pride for both you and your supporters. Class of 2022, you know it only too well that it would be an understatement to say that the last couple of years did not quite play out exactly how we would have all imagined, or in fact, anyone amongst us would have imagined. But regardless of the incessant challenges that the circumstances threw at you since the beginning of 2020, here you are. Despite what you were given, look at what you've done with it. You met your goals, and you're here today, receiving this testament to your perseverance, resilience, grit, and determination. So ladies and gentlemen, let's all put our hands together and celebrate these amazing graduates. Well done. I know it wasn't the student experience you had imagined, but you overcame great obstacles to make it to today. You traveled, some of you far, along the way navigating evolving restrictions here in Canada and around the world. You adapted and collaborated and made the most of online learning, gaining new skills and insights, and in the process, helping create and then refine a whole new paradigm for how the university educations will be delivered and received. Many of the lessons that we learned through these shared experiences of ours will endure, offering new and better learning tools to the future generations. Someday, you will look back and proudly recall that this is where it all began and you were at the heart of it. And I say that especially about our students in certain disciplines, health is one of them. It's not easy to do what, you do what you've done, what you've learned working online, but you have been absolutely amazing that you rose to the challenge and you're here with us today. You haven't had it easy, but I dare to imagine that someday you will also look back and realize and that is if you don't already do so, that this experience has made you stronger. Perhaps it's made you more resilient, more creative, more innovative, more empathetic, more civic-minded, more conscious of how the actions of one impact many, and more committed to striving for a better tomorrow. And these are exactly the kind of traits that the world needs in our future leaders at this point. Over these past two years, the phrase, the new normal, has become an increasingly familiar part of our lexicon. However, if you think about it, the society, for, the, for a society to enter a new normal is nothing really unique in itself. After all, human history is replete with major turning points of similar magnitude. So you may ask, what is unique about this new normal that you're facing, or we are facing together? Well, the uniqueness of this particular new normal resides in the confluence of the daunting and often wicked challenges that it coincides with. You know what those challenges are, but I'm going to just simply remind a few so that we do not lose sight of the challenges that we have ahead of us, or you have ahead of you. For example, climate change and its looming impacts, it's here. 
the recognition on an unprecedented scale that the historical wrongs, and there are many of those, must be righted. The need to feed a projected global population of nine billion or more without destroying our planet. The challenges to democracy, peace, and global order that we hear about every day these days. The senseless violence that continues to, see, to, to plague our societies, and Kathy Martin spoke about some of it as she asked us to um, reflect for a moment of silence. And lastly, the new global public health challenges. And that is something that you are going to provide primary leadership in. And the healthcare challenges or, or public health challenges are not just simply limited to public health. You think about any other wicked problem that I spoke about, climate change, for example, there is an inextricable connection between climate change and health. I talk about historic, historical wrongs. They are directly connected with the public health disparities that we see in our populations. Feeding the population, agricultural and health, they are two branches of, our, um, of, of some of the funda fundamental things in our society. Peace, mental health, and peace and violence have direct connections, and so on. <clears throat> have I depressed you enough yet? <laughs> I've been worried about it, that you might be sitting there and thinking, who is this clown? speaking about all these depressing things at a time when we're here to celebrate. Well, I'm coming to that. There's a reason why I thought I'll bring these, these challenges up here. We know that the task in front of you will not be easy. It will indeed demand a great deal of you. And here's the point. I know that your generation has demonstrated again and again that you have what it takes. You have what it takes to overcome extreme circumstances, especially we've seen that in the last two years. When I see what you have overcome over the past two years, and especially how you have overcome it, and what you have accomplished, and most importantly, what you have become as a result, I feel totally confident that the world is in very, very competent hands. So that's what we are here to celebrate. So let to, let's get to the celebration. Today is a big day. As you cross the stage today and become a member of the worldwide community of university graduates, you also join the Dalhousie alumni family, a distinguished group of people that has in fact already left an indelible mark on societies around the world. I have no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, that you will uphold this tradition and that years to come will see you too achieve great things, both for yourselves, but more importantly, for the world. While you do so, I hope you will retain, retain fond memories of your, your time here at Dalhousie and your role, roots at your alma mater. You, our graduates, are the greatest source of joy and pride for us. So on behalf of Dalhousie University, Please accept my heartfelt congratulations and my very best wishes for the brilliant future that you so richly deserve. Thank you, congratulations again, and please stay in touch. Thank you, President Saini. Will graduates please rise? Mr. Chancellor, as Chair of the Senate of Dalhousie University, I ask you to confer degrees on those candidates whose names have been approved by Senate. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I admit to their respective degrees and diplomas with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto those candidates 
who have fulfilled the requirements of that degree and whose names have been approved by the Senate. Admito vos ad gratum. Graduates, please be seated. I now call upon Dr. Brenda Merritt, the Dean of the Faculty of Health, Dr. Marty Leonard, the Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, and Zoe Camo, a Fountain School of Performing Arts alumni, to present the candidates who are here today receiving degrees. Mr. Chancellor, as Dean, I am pleased to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for degrees within the Faculty of Health. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Bachelor of Science, Kinesiology. Maya Abu Haydar, Distinction. <laughs> Bria Lynn Bates. Layla Angela Bautista, distinction. <laughs> Skylar Blachet. <laughs> Mazen Ali Brisha, with honors. Sarai Chetkin, with honors. <laughs> King Xing Choi. Gan Hai Bin Chu, distinction. <laughs> Eloise Mary Cockett, with honors, first class honors. <laughs> Christopher Stephen Conway. Gabriella Rose D'Amico. Imogen. Imogen Suzanne Delmott. <laughs> Hannah Eileen DeVoe. Tara Denise DeVouge. Morgan Grace DeMeck, distinction. Gabriella Valerie Duhaine. Anisha Ebenezer. And Gaia's and Gara Zayab Elberet. Matthew Alexander Ferguson.
Erica Jade Fullerton. Roshan Ghaffari, with honors, first class honors. Brittany Samantha Greer. Harmon Wade Grimshaw Surette, distinction. Hudson Ross Grimshaw Surette, with honors, first class honors. Juliana Grace Harvey, distinction. Brianna Elaine Harluck, distinction. So Young Hong. Shinatsu Hosokawa. <laughs> Anise Chrislia Johnson, distinction. <laughs> Maya Jones, with honors. Chelsea Marie Jodry, distinction. <laughs> Taylor Joyce. <laughs> Gerald Bailey King. Peijang Luo. Grant Andrew McDonald, distinction. Jonathan Christopher Madeski. Matthew Joseph Mirando, distinction. <laughs> Megan Matichuk, distinction. <laughs> Grace Marie McNulty, distinction. Brianna Nicole McPhee, first class honors. <laughs> Anne Marie Grace Michaud, distinction. <laughs> Yasmin El Meliti, distinction. Adam Mitchell Morris, first class honors. <laughs> Emma Marie Morrissey. <laughs> Malik Mohammed Mustafa. Renita Page Muse. Azusa Murphy, first class honors. K. 
Cameron James Nicholas. Samuel Ogunbayo. Nicholas Struen Robertson, distinction. Emma Avery Rubens. John Joseph Sala. Nicholas Saw. Nolan. Rebecca Anastasia Schmeiser, distinction. Malachi Stephen Shannon. Ji Yun Shin, distinction. Emma Elizabeth Starr. Madison Lynn Stroud, distinction. <laughs> Gabrielle Christine Tan. <laughs> Jillian Gabrielle Taylor, distinction. Dylan Thornton, distinction. <laughs> Veronica Rose Todd. <laughs> Kayla Diane Eddie Trumbull. <laughs> Taylor Adrienne Mackenzie Walker. Amy Wilson, distinction. Elizabeth Ann Woolcomb. Sophie Nicholson, first class honors. Patrick Wayne Whitman, with honors. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Bachelor of Science Recreation. Corey Carolyn Annette Ashley. Abigail Ruth Balfour. <laughs> Joshua Stephen Bordage. <laughs> Alexander Bruce Carson. Ocean Marjorie Marie Collins Pasemko. <laughs> Malcolm Cyril Bryden Elliott. <laughs> Kate Diane Gilseppi.
Erica Elaine Hines. Emily Ann McKay. Allison Margaret McNeil, distinction. Danielle Carmen Mayer. Natalie Marie McCarthy. Kayla Elizabeth McGuirk. Hope Lorna McMaster. Mark Nepal Distinction. Sarah Margaret Elizabeth Prosper, Distinction. <laughs> Caitlin Shabon Putnam, Distinction. Timothy Quinn. Christopher Ramsey. Marla Mackenzie Ryan. Taylor Jade Trenzik Geel. Emily Rose Vokey. Aaron Walkovich, First Class Honors. Kevin A. Waters. <laughs> Jessica Lauren Wiener, distinction. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, this concludes a presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the bachelor's degree. Mr. Chancellor, as Dean, I am pleased to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for degrees within the Faculty of Graduate Studies. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Science. Taylor Bachman, Speech-Language Pathology. Leslie Nicole Bazden, Audi Audiology. <laughs> Hannah Grace Bowers, Speech Language Pathology. <laughs> Terrence Patrick Campbell, Speech Language Pathology. Emma Jane Clark, Speech Language Pathology.
Kathleen Margaret Michelle Coles, Speech Language Pathology. Joshua Crepin, Audiology. Morgan Catherine Crosby, Audiology. Molly Olivia Graham, Speech Language Pathology. Taylor Nicole Hill, Speech Language Pathology. Madeline Aislin Ray Howard Massey, Audiology. Savannah Keeley Larder, Speech Language Pathology. <laughs> Jessica Loans, Rehabilitation Research. <laughs> Lee Catherine McDonald, Speech Language Pathology. Shauna Elizabeth McDonald, Speech Language Pathology. <laughs> Bethany Susan Maynard, Speech Language Pathology. <laughs> Taylor Michelle Jamie McCreary, Speech Language Pathology. Mary Neve McGettigan, Speech Language Pathology. <laughs> Maggie Amanda McInnes, Audiology. <laughs> Bethany Lydia McKinley Young, Speech Language Pathology. Shannon Kira Phillips, Audiology. <laughs> Jessica Louise Portneri, Speech Language Pathology. <laughs> Atia Kalen Faith Purificati. Fooney, Speech Language Pathology. Claire Emma Richardson, Speech Language Pathology. Alexandra Morgan Smith, Speech Language Pathology. Haley Elizabeth Stapleton, Speech Language Pathology. <laughs> Jennifer Irene Tukesberry, Audiology. <laughs> Alicia Hama Tung Shun, Audiology. Monica Ashna Tung Shun, Audiology. <laughs> Allison Emily Walls, Speech Language Pathology. <laughs> Abby Lauren Westborough, Speech Language Pathology.
Elizabeth Eileen Vitt, Speech Language Pathology. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Science Physiotherapy. Ifadayo Abel Adigbate. <laughs> Ashley Aaron Andrews. Dennis Ankra. Heather Marie Berry. Kylie Joanna Beals. Tamara Marjorie Belbin. Alexander Byton. Marcel David Boudreau. Sarah Lynn Caldwell. Madison Pauline Campbell. <laughs> Shannon Elizabeth Clark. Grace Marie Lordly Clark. Matthew Stephen Coleman. <laughs> Jeff Comden. Adrian Walter Crace. Malcolm Daniel Dunn. Teague Elizabeth Foreman. Roisin Aoife May Gallivan. Tana Sherry Genje. <laughs> Bianca Sue Gould. <laughs> Tyler Michael Kent. Bailey Brianna Kuhorn. Sarah Ann Landing. Jessica Loans. Keenan Ray Ling. Zachary Troy Macbeth. Woo! 
Shelby Paige McLean. Sasha Maggie Mooney. Emma Carolyn Moore. Carrie Jane Elizabeth Murphy. Gregory Paul Mason. Jennifer Ann Newman. Sabrina Elaine Nunn. Heidi Maria O'Keefe. Sarah Jane Pike. Caitlin Elizabeth Roberts. Angela Catherine Sand. <laughs> Amelie Katia Terra. <laughs> Alyssa Kimberly Thompson. Douglas Philip Walker. <laughs> Liam Walker. <laughs> Emily Lynn Wilson. Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of those candidates who are here today to receive the master's degree. Mr. Chancellor, the degree of Doctor of Philosophy is the highest earned degree awarded by the university and as such represents the culmination of the candidate's educational achievement. The following candidate, through thesis and examination, has fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Further, Mr. Chancellor, <laughs> the awarding of the PhD degree completes a long cooperation between the student and their thesis advisor, and we are pleased in this ceremony to also recognize the supervisor of the doctoral candidate and we ask the supervisor to stand and remain standing as the graduate crosses the stage. And following the awarding of the degree, we would invite you to sit on the stage with the faculty. <laughs> Jeffrey Zahavich. Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the degree of Doctor of Philosophy.
That was absolutely adorable. <laughs> you hear your daughter. Um, one last congratulations to all of our graduates today. I would like now to call attention to the families and the friends of our graduates. We know that convocation is such an important occasion for you as well. And I'm sure that all of us here recognize the importance uh, of your love and your support uh, to our students along the way. So we would like to express our gratitude to you for the role that you've played. So can I ask the graduates to stand one last time? And if I can ask the onstage party to stand as well. This is an opportunity for us uh, to applaud you. You've been applauding students all day, and we just want to thank you for all your love and support. Please be seated. Thank you. Conferring of an honorary doctoral degree is the highest honor a university bestows. I now call upon Dr. Louise Terry, Chair of the Senate, to present the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Dr. Mencha, would you please rise? <laughs> the clinical and academic contributions Dr. George Mencha has made to the field of audiology and to people living with communication disorders all over the world is likely incalculable. He has been an international leader and pioneer in his field for more than five decades. His scholarship, advocacy, and old-fashioned hard work have improved the lives of tens of thousands of Nova Scotians and millions around the world. In the words of his nominator, Dr. Michael Kefter, director of Dalhousie's School of Communication Sciences and Disorders, Dr. Mencha is an accomplished clinician a program builder, and a role model. He is also a teacher, researcher, and author, advocating for individuals with communication disorders to students, the public, and governments, both here and around the world. Dr. Mencher's visionary and tireless industry can be credited with bringing audiology and speech-language pathology services to every Nova Scotian. As director of the Nova Scotia Hearing and Speech Centers, he recognized the need for an education program for clinicians in the region. At the time, there was only one center with just seven clinicians to serve the entire province. He was instrumental in founding the School of Communication Sciences and Disorders at Dalhousie serving as Professor of Audiology from 1974 to 2012 and teaching every student admitted to the program during his tenure. By the time he left his post at the Hearing and Speech Centres in 1996, there were 110 clinicians in 25 permanent clinics throughout the province, a testament to his tireless work to recruit and train professionals at Dalhousie. Dr. Mencher is also a pioneer and innovator in newborn hearing screening and the early identification of hearing loss, helping Nova Scotia become the first province to widely screen new babies for hearing loss. He was also instrumental in establishing infant hearing screening programs across Canada and around the world. 
affectionately referred to as Mr. International by his colleagues. Dr. Mencher has consulted and volunteered in dozens of countries, including in the former Yugoslavia, Israel, the Caribbean, South and Central America, Thailand and China, to develop screening programs, train personnel, and provide audiology services. Dr. Mencher established the Mencher Family Scholarship to support students in the School of Communication Sciences and Disorders who complete an international practicum placement. He was also influential in creating the Irving and Jeannie Glovin Award for Dalhousie students through the Oscar Schindler Humanities Foundation. With over 100 scholarly articles and eight books to his credit, Dr. Mencher has served in prominent roles in several national and international professional associations. He has received the honors of the American Speech, Language, and Hearing Association, the Global Village Award for significant contributions to audiology worldwide from the American Audiology Association, and the honors of the association from the Canadian Academy of Audiology. Since his retirement, Dr. Mencher has enjoyed being a professional tour guide in Halifax and has found time to pen a book, Travels and Travails, A Life Journey, Short Stories of Travels Around the World. Perhaps he says it best in his own book blurb. I believe in the good within most folks. I love to travel. I love to visit new places. I love being alive in an exciting and interesting world. In recognition of five decades of unrivaled contributions to the art, scholarship, and humanity of communication sciences, I ask you, Mr. Chancellor, in the name of the Senate, to bestow upon Dr. George T. Mencher the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa. Dr. George Mencher, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations, Dr. Mencher. It is my pleasure now to invite, invite Dr. Mencher to deliver the convocation address. It's almost over, guys. <laughs> and if you think it's warm out there, it's pretty hot up here. And I figure it's probably because there are so many degrees in the room. <laughs> Fellow graduates. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, distinguished guests, faculty and staff of Dalhousie, families and friends. First, I want to congratulate each of you, graduates, for completing your program. Many of you will be starting a new career and for the first time, earning some real money. <laughs> for some, this is not a culmination, but a stepping stone to more years of tuition, hard work, and long hours of studying. But no matter where you are on that spectrum, congrats on a job well done. This is truly a significant achievement, and we all collectively applaud each and every one of you. Here with us today are families, friends, and supporters. It's important to congratulate them too. Most of you are here because these folks helped to motivate you and instilled in you the values, principles, and ideals which Dalhousie has amplified and encouraged you to develop even further. These are the folks who have stood by you through it all. Please join me in giving a round of applause to those who have done so much to get you here. Applause 
I would like to thank another group on your behalf. My fifth grade teacher was named Mrs. Hatton, and she was once described as the worst teacher in the school and actually called evil by a student because she made us work really hard and she gave us homework. But it was Mrs. Hatton who lit a spark that led me to where I am today. Recently, I asked a physio what got him into the field. He recalled a sixth grade science teacher who inspired him to read about the body and how it functions. The rest is his history. We all have someone who set us on the road to achievement, who opened our eyes to learning and to the wider world. For you, it might have been a school teacher, a university professor, a community leader, an aunt, or the neighbor down the street. That person motivated you and started you on the path to where you are today. Perhaps they know what they did, and perhaps they don't. I thank those folks on your behalf, but of course it would be better if you were to do so yourselves. If you were to stop by for a visit or send an email and just say thanks. That's the least they deserve for the life-changing act of inspiring you. You will also repay them by being an inspiration to the next generation of students and clinicians coming along behind you. In short, you'll be playing it forward. Finally, in the thanks department, it is my turn to say a heartfelt thank you to my own supportive family and to those at Dalhousie, Dalhousie University responsible <clears throat> for awarding me this honorary degree. Let there be no doubt it is a highlight of my life and something I shall cherish and honor forever. I truly thank you, dear colleagues, family, and friends. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. As you leave Dalhousie, I'm talking to the students now, folks. You can listen, but they're the focus. As you leave Dalhousie, you are turning a page in your life. The year I turned my big page, the Hong Kong flu was rampant in the world. There was fighting in the Sinai. Our prime minister was named Trudeau. And the Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Someday you will look back at your page turning day and speak of COVID-19, fighting in the Ukraine, and our prime minister still seems to be named Trudeau. <laughs> no Stanley Cup for the Leafs this year, even though it seemed for a while that they had a shot at it. My grandson says, it's a rebuilding year. <laughs> I guess that means you can say that during your page turning year, the Toronto Maple Leafs celebrated their 55th consecutive annual rebuilding year. Technically, you grads are now entering a health profession, but I prefer to call our disciplines helping professions. We study chemistry, physics, statistics, biology. We know anatomy and physiology and psychology, but that's not what makes our work interesting or meaningful. Our joy comes from working with people. For me, as an audiologist, it was a look on the face of a young child hearing sound for the first time. For you, it might be the discharge of a stroke patient who can now reuse limbs or can communicate more effectively. Health professions are professions of science and professions of care. I am proud to count myself in that group and am especially proud to welcome you on behalf of your colleagues and fellow workers, but perhaps more importantly, on behalf of the patients and clients whose lives you will change. The piece of paper you received today shows that you have the knowledge, but applying that knowledge works best in an environment that combines science and care. I like to use a checklist, it's an acronym, to describe that. C is for correctly applying skills, including those learned in school and those learned staying current in your field. Learning does not stop at graduation, it actually just begins there. H is for honestly. It is important to know what you know, and perhaps even more importantly, to know what you don't know. Seeking guidance or help when you need it is a wise choice. 
and not a sign of inadequacy or failure. E is for ethically. Almost all uh, professions have provincial and national societies offering continuing education, information on best practices in the field, and a code of ethics. Operating ethically ensures you do the best you can for those you serve, and it also helps protect you in difficult situations. The second C is for communicatively. Anytime you deal with patients or clients, an open, understanding, give and take listening environment is the most successful. You may know what to do, but unless those around you understand and accept what you are trying to achieve, it won't succeed. Finally, K is for kindly. Mark Twain once said, kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Kindness means being friendly, generous with yourself, compassionate, and caring. So once again, check is C for correct application of skills, H for honesty in what you can and cannot do, E is ethical in what you do, C communicate by listening and understanding others, and finally K, kind, compassionate, and caring. I urge you to check yourselves periodically. It's a good way of knowing if you're on the right path. They say that a good commence, I don't know who they are. They say that a good commencement address contains a laugh, a tear, and something to take home. As for the laugh, I noted many of you chuckled when I mentioned the Maple Leafs and their 55th consecutive annual rebuilding year. But the problem is not clear if discussing the Maple Leafs is a comedy or a tragedy. <laughs> One doesn't know whether to laugh or cry. That brings me to tear. Perhaps there was a tear when you thought of all those who helped you arrive at this significant moment in your life, or when you recognize the natural fear everyone feels when leaving this wonderful, sheltered university environment and moving into an unknown future. As for something to take home, I hope my checklist gave you some thought. However, I suspect that little piece of paper that you have on your laps from Dalhousie is a bit more tangible in that department, but all in all, I believe I have met my responsibility. In closing then, let me say, as you go forth, please remember that you reflect the values of your parents, your caregivers and loved ones, your profession, and this institution. Dalhousie recognizes in its description of our disciplines that our professions don't just span a campus, we span communities. And based on my career, I would say they span the world and open to each of us an opportunity to reach out well beyond our known horizons. As an audiologist, I have lectured in nearly 75 countries and lived and worked in seven. Everyone in this room, on that part of the room, wants you to beat that mark. Do it. I pray that each of you is blessed with success in all your endeavors. I challenge you to think beyond the walls around you. Please live and work with intention laugh and play with abandon, continue to learn, do what you love, and apply the knowledge you are taking from Dalhousie skillfully to improve the lives of those in your care and to model your profession for those who follow. I urge you, go forth and enrich the world. Congratulations, class of 22. I'm proud to be one of you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mencher. If I can just take a brief moment. Um, uh, as Louise pointed out in her citation, the Irving and Jean Glovin Award was established in 2003 by the Oscar Schindler Humanities Foundation. Uh, Irving Glovin was executive producer uh, on the Schindler's List. If you haven't seen the movie, you should. Um, George is Irving's uh, nephew. The award at Dalhousie was established um, 
as an essay competition, evaluating the contributions of students on the subject of the essence of good human behavior. And I had the privilege of serving on the selection committee with George uh, for several years when I served as Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, along with Marty as well. Um, it is so fitting that Dalhousie is uh, bestowing an honorary degree on George, uh, someone who has spent so much time working with Dalhousie to identify from these essays the essence of good human behavior. And of course, you epitomize that in your local, your national, and your international contributions, George. So once again, thank you very much. Graduates, let me be the first to acknowledge that as you leave the auditorium today, you will officially become part of Dalhousie's alumni network of over 152,000 fellow alumni. Uh, this is a wonderful asset, and I hope you'll take advantage of the connection to the broader Dalhousie community, and we invite you to get involved, and we invite you to stay involved. In recognition of your new status, members of the Alumni Association will be presenting you with an alumni pin on the way out of the ceremony uh, today, and we hope you wear it uh, and wear it with pride. Congratulations again. Welcome to the Dalhousie Alumni family. Graduates and guests, this concludes the business of convocation today. After uh, the singing of O Canada, we are asking if you could, if possible, uh, remain standing. Uh, as the academic procession leaves the auditorium. So I now invite you to join Josh Robinson, a Dalhousie voice student in the Faculty, uh, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences in the Fountain School of Performing Arts in the Singing of O Canada. After Josh is completed, as the procession walks off, Aaron Prosper will be uh, providing us with the Mi'kmaq Honor Song as the students and the um, uh, the, uh, 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 the, the folks on stage, the, <laughs> leave, leave. Uh, so Josh, uh, please come, come to the stage. Thank you very much.
Oh, hey.